Hello and welcome, quite a hot and spooky happy Halloween topic today. How to pull meme coin data using Python. Now, before getting into it, meme coins are obviously high risk and also high scam potential. So don't get yourself burnt. I'm just showing you how to pull some data out of pools and do some basic analysis. If you want to go deeper, let me know below, leave a like, share, and then I'm getting an education that this topic is relevant for you. Before getting into the code, I recommend to watch my video on DEXs and liquidity pools. I'm going over the basics there and they give you a better understanding of what I'm actually doing here. That said, let's get started. I'm on a DEX screener site here and what I'm seeing here are all meme coins based on the Solana chain. And what I will do is pull some open, high, low, close volume data or candlestick data for a given coin. So let's just pick one here. You can pick whatever you're interested in. I'm just picking this one, KitKat here. From this coin, you need the mint address. That is a unique identifier for that coin and you will find it, for instance, here. So you copy this KitKat address here and then you move to your coding environment. Now this is the coding environment and this is the mint address. This is where you copy paste it and with that you can use this mint address to pull all liquidity pools based on Solana. So what this API call here is doing it is using the Gecko terminal and then is pulling the Solana coins and then for this KitKat coin here. So you just pass the mint address in the API call and pull pool data. Why is that? Why do you need a pool? Why not just pull the coin name as you would, for instance, for Bitcoin versus USDT data? Because as I explained in the liquidity pool video, you have a ton or multiple liquidity pools which are holding this coin. And with that, you're getting all the pools here. And then you grab the price data from a given pool. So in this case, I'm pulling all pools and you will see that you're getting a lot of information here. And this is containing all the pools where you can trade this KitKat coin here, this KitKat meme coin. Now, if you take a look at the length of this dictionary here or this list containing dictionaries with pool data, you will see how many pools are currently holding that coin. So you can access 18 pools. If you take, let's get back here and take a look at another coin, maybe some a bit older coin here. So this Pippin or whatever it's called, same story. And then you copy paste this mint again, pull the pools you possibly have more pools here. There you see 20 pools, slightly more than that. And here you can already do some analysis. So there's a lot of pool data. You can sort it by liquidities. You can do a lot with that here. But what I'm just doing is I'm extracting the pool address of the first pool here. So as said, in this case, we have 20 pools. So we are just working with this Pippin coin for now. You can test out other coins as said. Uh, but we are taking the Pippin coin and just pull the pool address of the first pool here. So you're just going in the pools list, extract the first pool and then pull the address. And as said, every of those 20 pools has a unique pool address. And that is where you then pull the price data from. And you also want to have the token name because it could be that in a certain pool, you have, for instance, this Pippin coin versus something else than Solana. So you want to make sure that you actually have KitKat versus Solana. So with that, you're just getting an overview of what you're actually pulling here. So let's execute that and take a look at the pool address, which is just a, a unique identifier for this given pool for the first pool. And then the token name is hopefully Pippin versus Zol, And this is the case. Now, 
We want to just pull price data for this given pool, which we can identify using the pool address. So what I'm going to do is push another API call here or pull another get API call, pass the pool address to the Solana pools endpoint, pull open high low close volume data, and then pass the minute. This is just the time interval you pull from. So you know you have daily data, minute data, five minutes, 50 minutes, and so on. So I'm just connecting to the minute endpoint, pass parameters, which is five, that is just five minute granular data, and the limit, which are thousand rows. Now, you can, and I've explained that in many of my previous videos, use pagination to pull more than thousand rows. So that's an easy one. I'm just pulling the first thousand here, but if you want to go more back in time or you pull more granular data, such as one minute data, and you want to go back more than thousand rows, you can do that using pagination. If you don't know how to do that, happy to reference the video. Now this just pulling open high low close volume data, looking somewhat crypt cryptic like this. So you see you have a, a nested dictionary here again, and this is the relevant one where you have a timestamp. As you see, this is Unix, so not human readable, then open high, low, close volume. And what I'm doing here is just wrapping all this cryptic stuff into a data frame. So I'm taking data, then attributes, and then the open high, low, close volume list, and name it as they are. So first is a timestamp TS, then open high, low, close volume. So I'm wrapping that up into a data frame. So I just, just get a data frame as you're used to it, looking like this. So I have nicely timestamp open high, low, close volume. Then this is just a column. So I'm setting that to the index of the data frame. Nothing more than that, looking like this now. And now I have nicely ordered open high low close volume data. Nobody can read this timestamp except a machine. So I'm transforming this Unix timestamp into a human readable timestamp using div index to date time, pass unit SS. And with that, I'm getting a very nicely formatted data frame using open high low close volume data on this Pippin coin here. Now, as you see, this index is re Burst, meaning it's starting at the latest available data point and is ending at the earliest available data point. This is quite common for those kind of APIs, but I preferred the other way around. So I want to start at the earliest point in time and then the latest point in time. So what I'm going to do is just uh, sorting the index of this data frame. And with that, I'm getting it the other way around. So it's starting at the earliest point and ending at the latest possible point here. And then you can start to do some, for instance, visualization of the close here. And you will see how this coin was pumped in the most recent time and possibly will go back to these levels at some point. But who knows? Another example, maybe let's take a look at the another coin here. So just pulling, uh, let's take maybe another one here. So maybe a more recent one, something in this. Maybe please be patient, I have. Okay, sorry for the name. There's nothing I can do about this. Then you put in the mint address here for this coin, pull the pools, and now you see you only have six liquidity pools, pull the pull the pool address and the token name, then the open high low close volume data, and then finally take a look at the plot again of this coin, and you see this huge movement here. Now, obviously, this is just a scratch on the surface. There's a lot more to explore here. Cross coin analysis, cross pool analysis, bot implementation, just to name a few. The sky is the limit. So if you're interested in that, let me know below. Like the video, share the video. That said, thank you very much for watching. 
I'm looking forward to seeing you in the upcoming videos. Cheers. Bye. Bye.